the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Loving and gracious Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful morning as we promised. That's in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 19, said, Where two of you agree in touching anything on earth, it'll be done by our Father and our we thank you, Lord, as we are sitting in your presence to listen to your word, Lord. We thank you that you have opened our spiritual eyes, our ears, and our heart to receive your word. As we believe man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from your mouth, Lord. We thank you once again as I humble myself. Lord, think to my mind, speak to my vocal cord. Let everything be of you, nothing of me. Lord. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. Yeah. Praise uh, the Lord, brother. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 12. Today we are looking at, we have different callings in life. The three different callings. God calls all of us. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. Amen. Yes. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. The first calling God calls all of us is, out of darkness. He wants all of us because this world is in darkness and God is telling you and me, we are the light of the world. So we can, unless we follow Jesus, he says, Jesus spoke to them, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. Today, as we examine and Look at our lives. Are we walking in darkness? Or are we walking in the light? Many people today, they love the darkness because in the darkness, nobody can see what you're doing. And the devil wants all of us to be in darkness. That's why we find it so difficult to listen to the word of God, to believe in it, and to act according to the word of God. We all believe the word of God. God wants us to put that into action. And to do that, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus is telling us, he has given us another helper to be with us forever. So when we try to do things on our own, we find it difficult and it is impossible. That's what it says. Without him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can do all things. Without him, I can do nothing means, it means I can't do anything which has eternal value. Because we know we were all created to know him, to love him, and serve him. And that is our main calling. Our main calling is to become like Christ and to fulfill every plan of God because that is God's plan for us. As we know, we are all children of God. The moment we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior in John 1.12, he says, all those who believed in his name, he gave them the power to become children of God. See how easy it is. Just by believing in his name, we become a child of God. Now, if it is so difficult for us to believe who we are, that's why we need to remind ourselves who we are. We are all children of God. And our identity will not be changed because God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love for you and me will never change. All I need to do is look at myself and look at God. Who am I? I am a child of God. So I need to know God as my father. And as long as we look at God as our father, we will not have any kind of fear because we can approach him at any time, all the time, because we know he loves us with an everlasting love. So the Bible encourages us, shows us that God in his mercy has chosen us. If you look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Yes. Verses. Ephesians chapter 1, 3, 4, and 5. Yes. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. Yes. So we see it is very clear. So that's why when we are, we are, we are finding it difficult to live the life that God has called us to live, we need to speak to God. We need to put the blame on God. Tell, tell him, Father, you, it was your plan. We didn't come into this planet on, the, on our own. None of us came on our own. We see many people uh, while uh, while the parents are, are married, you know, they don't want to have a child. They have an abortion. Above all that, when the child comes out, when when the child comes, we know it is purely God's plan for us. So we need we we know very clearly that after reading the Word of God, we see. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, before the foundation, before the world was created, God had you and me in mind. And then he says that we should be holy and blameless. So we need to tell God, Lord, according to your plan, I should be holy and blameless. Now that is your calling for you and for me. So we need to be holy and blameless. So we can't do it on our own. That's why. We need to depend on the Holy Spirit. And then when we ask the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to live this life. He destined us in love to be his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ according to his purpose. So our main is to become more and more like Jesus. That is our calling. So that is what the first thing called that God calls us is come out of darkness. Because you know, if we go into a room where there is darkness, what we do, first thing we search for the light, where to put on the light. We put on the light and the darkness will go. So if there is no light there, then we find it difficult. We need to get a torch or do something to, to despise the darkness. Here in our lives, God is telling us the only way to, to get rid of this darkness is to follow his instructions. That's what he says in, we read in John 8.12. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but have the light and life. So you see, that's why the Bible teaches us very clearly, Psalm 119, says, I can be 119, 105. Yes. Oh, no. You are going to lamp to my feet and the light to my path. Amen. So every day we need, that's why we need the word of God. We need directions. One step at a time, one day at a time. And that's why, and all this will happen unless we have tasted the love of God. Unless we know that who we are and who our God is. Our God is our Father and whatever He gives us instructions, it is given to us through love. So in order to do that, the Bible gives us instructions that we need to study the Word of God. If you look at uh, the same Psalm, verse 9, 105, 119, verse 9. How can young people keep their way pure by guarding it according to your word? Amen. Yes. So it says very clearly, how can young people keep is way pure. So no, we we are we want to live a holy, happy, victorious life. We want to live a life, life that is pure. The only instructions God tells us is that we need to keep His word in our heart. If I hide my, the word of God in my heart, I would be able to preserve my heart from sin. So every day we need the word of God. We need to know who we are. Again, you look at Ephesians chapter two, verses. 
8 to 10. Yeah. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Amen. So it says very clearly, by the grace of God, you and me are being saved. Now God has saved us, he has kept us, set us apart so that we would magnify and glorify his name. So every day, the Bible tells us the whole world is filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. So our calling is, by the grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not because of works. You know, people think if we are, if I'm praying, if I'm doing all these things, it's not my works. It's not because of works, lest any man boast should boast. For we are all his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. For we are created for the good works which God prepared beforehand that we should be walk in, in them. So that is our calling, that people looking at us, they should see the light of God in us. So that is, um, again, if you look at uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 11. Yes. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. Right. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Amen. Yeah. So yeah, it says, as is, as it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So each and every each and every one of us have to give an account of God. So our main calling is you now God wants us. As we come to the light, as we come to know the truth, now we should be doing our Father's business. And that's why we are here on this planet. So wherever we go, we should allow the light to shine. People looking at us, they should be attracted. They should know this is a child of God. So that, that is our main calling, it says. And our part is, so each and every one of us has to give an account what we have done for the Lord. The Lord has, no, most of us, we will not be able to go and preach the word of God. But we can spend some time every day when we pray, thanking the Lord first for sending people into our lives. Today, if we examine if somebody came and shared the gospel with you, today, because of that brother, that sister, you have come to taste the Lord. And now you have grown spiritually now. Now you're doing the things that God wants you to do. And now what you do now? You pray for all the people who are spiritually blind. Because they might be highly educated. They might be having everything in this world. But if they do not have Jesus, they are still living in darkness. Now, through the word of God, we are all come out of darkness. The first okay. calling. What about our brothers and sisters who are still living in darkness? The people who do not know Christ. The people who are still struggling. Because... Now we see when the people are struggling, they're finding there are there are so many good people. Now, we, we, people will say, no, they are good. Although they're not Christians, they're good. Or even if you're Christian, they say those people are very good. They are, but the Bible tells us our ah, good works is like a filthy rag. So that's why we cannot be saved by our good works, our deeds. The only way we can get saved by believing in Christ, believing that Jesus has already died for us. He has chosen us when, not even today, even before we were formed in our mother's womb, to be blameless and holy. That is our calling. So when we, we, are, we are struggling to find uh, our lives, to, to live our life the way God wants us to live, because we are trying to do it on our own. 
now when every day we need the power of the holy spirit we need the precious blood of jesus and that's why we come every morning asking god to purify our heart so now we have come to a stage now we know when we think of something we know is it from the lord or is it from the world or is it from the enemy so now we 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 cannot even think on our own because if we think on our own we will we will be misled so that's why we keep saying i have the mind of christ so when i have the mind of christ now i think like christ i speak like christ i want to do the things that christ wants me to do others all of us we are all selfish because that is the way we look at ourselves we, whenever if we, for example if you take a, a group photograph if you look at a photograph the moment you look at the photograph you look for yourself are you there if you are not there you look for your family members are they there are they if you and your family members are not there you are not so much interested in that Oh. They are on that, your phone, eh? they are there on top. So, basically we are all selfish. Now, when we come to the Lord, when we receive the Holy Spirit now, slowly we begin to have the nature of God. Now, because now we know God is telling us, you must love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. And none of us can do that. So that's why God is telling you and me now, just receive that love. Believe that I have loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31.3 says, what a wonderful scripture that is. I have already loved you with an everlasting love. So all we need to do is just believe and receive the love of God. The moment, that is what we are doing every morning. We are coming in the morning and we are praying, hallelujah, hallelujah. What are we doing? As we are praising and thanking God, we are building ourselves up, up on the most holy faith and what is god doing the holy spirit is pouring his love into our heart because we need an overflow of this love if we don't have enough love we are not able to i am not able to love myself now i am not able to love my neighbor and i am not able to even love my enemy now because unless i am filled with the love of god now i start to love god the way he loves me because St. Paul tells us, you know, and the love of God, God loved us so much that, you know, you do not know the length, the breadth, and the depth of God's love. That is his nature. That is his love. And St. Paul knew the love of God because he says, he, he prayed in tongues more than all of us. And that is what the love of God was so much in him that even the shadow that fell on people were getting healed. They were getting healed. The power of God was so much in him. So that same power is in Christ and that where is Christ is in you now. So whenever we are praying in tongues and we are doing the things that God wants us to do, that same power is being released from inside. And that's why the Bible says this, mountains melt like wax in his presence. Is where, where is God now? He's in you. He's in me. Now I need to connect myself by believing in his word, believing in his promise that God is dwelling in my heart. The moment I do that, now I become a living tabernacle. Wherever we go, we all go. The Bible says, my presence shall go before you. Now what are we doing? We are believing God's word. We are activating the power of God. And now we are able to see results. Wherever you go, the presence of God will fill that house, will fill that church, wherever you go. And that is what God is telling us. The first calling is, come out. You are the light of the world. Now come out of darkness. So wherever we go, we should be showing the people that we are the light of this world. And that is what God is calling us today. He's calling us to show this world that is living in darkness that you and me. That's all. In one place it says, let your light shine among others and let them see your good works and let them glorify God. Now what is this good works now? Now people think, now, supposing if I'm going and helping the poor, and I'm giving money to the home for the age and or feeding the poor. All these are good works. But what it says, all these things should be done secretly. But what are these good works that God is telling us? When the people see us, they would magnify God. When we go to the home for the age or go to a hospital and you pray for them. Now, usually what we do, we go and pray for them. God is telling us, according to the word, go heal the sick cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. So now, when we go there and we talk to them, we why we speak to them is 
because they are already worried, they are depressed, they are having some kind of problem, especially if they are non-Christians. We speak to them, we talk to them about Jesus, and now we know what happens. Faith comes from hearing and hearing God's word. So we, because they are, when when the person is sick, those pe those people are angry with somebody, and finally they are angry with God. Why God gave me that sickness? Then we need to tell them our God is a good God, and only good things come from God. And then if we go still worse. When, when they find the disease very critical and they are not able to live, especially if it's cancer now, then we need to tell them, say, our God is a good God and he doesn't, he, whatever comes from him is, is good. So we need to tell them we have an enemy who is the devil who comes to kill, steal and destroy. And then as we are sp speaking to them, now faith comes from hearing and hearing God's word. They get a, a lot of consolation, comfort from your as you speak to them, the word of God. Then you tell them, see, this is what happens in the Bible. And now God tells us, go into the whole world and proclaim the good news. Good news, God loves you. So we need to get them in a mindset of believing in God's word. Now they're able to receive God's love. So we can tell them, see, whatever you're going through here is Romans 8, 18, the, term, the suffering that you're going through on this planet Earth is only temporary. But what is eternal is going to be with the Father. And that, that if you, can you read that uh, scripture, Romans 8, 18? It's such a powerful scripture. We cannot compare the glory that's waiting for us. So all of us, we suffer on this one. Romans 8, 18. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. Yeah. And so now, that's why you, our duty is to go and share with them Pray with them, do what the Spirit leads us to do. And then we need to comfort them and tell them, this is the thing. Whatever you're going through is only temporary. The moment you leave this planet Earth, you're going to be in the presence of God. That is what the Bible says. The suffering that we go through cannot be compared to the glory that's waiting for us. So the devil wants you to confess the wrong word. He doesn't want you to believe in God. So if you say, I don't believe in Jesus, I don't accept Christ, now you're not entitled for the blessing because it says we need to believe in his word, to believe in his promise. Because the Bible says when you believe in his name, you become a child of God. When you're a child of God, you're entitled for all these blessings. So now, as you become a child of God now, the, the spirit will lead us so that we could live the life that God wants us to live. Now it says in Colossians chapter 1, 13 and 14. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Yes. So, no, God did his part. Now, our part is to believe in the redemption, in the good works what God has done for us. See, he has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. So now, when we read the word of God, we all read the word of God, we need to believe it and start acting according to the word of God. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to believe who we are. We are children of God. So we are his children. Now we have the nature of God. So now what God loves and what God hates. What God loves is, is, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith in his promises, faith in the scriptures, faith that God is in, is working in you and me. So, And what God hates, he hates sin. Sin will separate you from the love of God. Sin will make you guilty. Sin will not allow you to receive the blessings of God. Sin will keep you away from his presence. And that's what God, when you see, he, God loves sinners, but he hates sin. Sin will keep you away. So now you're not able to receive God's love. You're not able to receive his presence. You're not able to enjoy every blessing. Because the Bible says, blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing. God has already blessed us. And then only he puts us in a mother's womb. He calls you and me and puts you in your mother's womb. And now 
when you grow up, when you when your spiritual eyes are open and when you know who you are now, you know the whole Bible, everything that is written is it's for you. It's your birthright. God has given to you freely. That's why you must boldly confess the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, every promise in the Bible, whatever God has given, is for you and for me. Now, I need to believe and receive it. And when I once I receive it, I start acting on it. And now I teach others who are my brothers and sisters and whoever believes in him, they could also enjoy because God doesn't show partiality. The Bible is so easy and simple. When we ask the Holy Spirit to teach us, to show us, Otherwise, we, when we try it with our own understanding, we are not able to understand, we are not able to believe. So here we have the greatest helper, the one who inspired, was inspired to write the Bible, is the Holy Spirit. So when you ask the Holy Spirit, He will show you, He will lead you, He will guide you, and now it becomes real to you. Because that's why the Bible it says in Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, the moment, uh, for example, now, uh, if you are in a house where uh, there is a uh, there's a kitchen there, the fridge is there, and food, everything is there now. Now, if you have not tasted the food, you will not eat the food. So the moment you taste it, and you know the fridge is filled with food, whatever you, whatever you like, you only need to take it and warm it up and eat, or uh, prepare and eat, because you know you have tasted that food. The same way God is trying to tell us, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Many people have not tasted God's love. And that's why they're struggling to believe God, believe His word. And they, that's why they get worried about so many things. Now, we, as we come closer and closer to God, we know worry is not for a person who believes God. Because Jesus tells us, cast all your cares upon me, for, I, for He cares about you. So God is telling us, give 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your cares. So we cannot say that we will not have a problem. Now, for example, when I came into the ministry, I came because of problems. The people say, you know, uh, suffering. Now, nobody wants to suffer. Because I didn't want to suffer, I was having problems only, I came to the Lord. But after coming to the Lord, we come to know whether you come whether you believe in God or don't believe in God, there will be problem, there will be uh, suffering. Now, when you come to God, now we know if you have a problem, how to solve the problem and how to uh, come out of the problem because through the instruction of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, we can face any kind of situation now. Now you know, the Bible says very clearly, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God is with you. So he wants you to see, he wants you to know that he can handle that problem. He wants you to believe in him, to trust in him. So that's how our journey starts. We need to recognize who's in our boat. We always uh, remind ourselves, Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No, he is a faithful God. He is faithful God. He is faithful to his word. Are we faithful to him? That is the problem. We, we are, many of us are not faithful. And that is why we are struggling in our spiritual life. In the, in the natural, what we do, we take our words very lightly. Now, for example, now, I am joining the link. Now, I know I'm outside. I'm not able to come at 8 o'clock. I need to call and tell Jessica, I'm out. I, I'll come a little late. If I... Take it very lightly, like no, ah, what's the name? No problem. She will, she will start. Uh, they can wait for me. That shows I am not honoring my word, because I know I am in traffic. I am not able to reach up. I, if I call and inform, especially now we have telephone. The earlier days we didn't have a telephone. So then, because if you don't honor your word, how will you honor God's word? I still remember an example. I was starting a prayer meeting every Saturday in, in a house house meeting. So the meeting was about to start at 6.30. I am always there at 6.15 and I was there. So when we started at 6.30, we were waiting for the crowd to start. The moment we started the prayer, 
that girl, she's a student of my wife. She's a young girl, but she gets messages, prophecy. So the moment I started the prayer, she says, Andre, she calls me by the name and says, uh, you're, you're waiting for the crowd. I am here at 6.15. From that day, I recognize, you know, you should, when you, especially for prayer meeting, going for mass, you should be on time. Because God honors. Now, if you don't honor your word, and then if you go to a house and pray, the, and you're praying for that cancer, or you're praying for any sickness, or even if you're going and praying uh, to drive out demons, no, God is telling you, you are not honoring your own word. How will you honor my word? We Many of us take it very lightly. I'll, I'll come at 4 o'clock. Then when it's 3 o'clock, you know, I understand. There's not only Newton, I can tell him slowly. No, you should call and tell him. Brother, I'm, a, I'm traffic, I'm not able to come. You're honoring your, your word. So now, you are, that's why I treasure God's word. When I say, Lord, I love you, I really mean it. And God knows it. The moment you say, Lord, I love you, you, you can get connected to God so instantly, intimate relationship you can have. And that is what God wants you to know. He is longing for your love. That's why we see in the example, he leaves the 99 and comes after you. That is how important on soul is. If God honors that, who are we to say that brother won't be saved or that sister won't be saved? If we have the love of God in our hearts, we should have the same burden. That's why I keep always, uh, he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Because the same desire should be in you and me, that not a single soul should perish. That is God's plan. Now, what have we done for that part, on our part? First, am I enjoying my life? God wants me to be happy. He wants me to rejoice. He wants me to know to depend on Him. That's why the Bible does without faith, it is impossible to please God. You need to first believe in His Word. Believe that God has chosen you. He has brought you into this planet Earth. He has brought you out of darkness. He has done His part now. He wants you to shine. He wants you to allow the light that is in you to shine among others. Wherever you go, you might be the only person who can preach the gospel to them. Are we still in darkness? Are we still... See, our duty when we go to heaven, God is going to ask, how many people have you spoken? What, are the, what have you done on this planet Earth? So if we are having one day, dull day or bad day, no, you think when we say... We are having a dull day, a bad day. We, what, what are we saying? God cannot handle my problem. So I get worried. I was a person who keep worrying about so many things. Now when I preach the gospel, now I, I always tell myself, I need to believe what I'm preaching. I need to practice what I'm doing. So that is what we need. Worry is not because we know God is the God who is faithful to his word. Cast all your cares upon me. For I care for you. We tell our worries and problems to people, whereas they are limited. Or they can do, do they, they, only what they can do, more than that they cannot do. But God says, I am with you. Even if you call a person to pray for pray for you, that person may not be online or the, the phone may not get you may not be connected. But the Holy Spirit is with you in you all the days of your life. Now you can get connected, you can get your problem solved instantly, immediately. And that is what God wants us to know. And when we do that, and we should teach others. When we come out of this darkness, we need to teach others how to come out of this darkness. See, years have passed. Still, people, if you look at uh, Colossians 1, 25 and 26. Yes. <laughs> I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, 
but has now been revealed to his saints. Amen. And what is the next one? To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the mystery that was been hidden for ages. Now it has been revealed to the saints, to you and me. What is the mystery? Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit is in you now. Christ mm -hmm. is in you. And that is the mystery. From the day I, I learned this verse, my life has been changed. Now you are not alone. Christ is in you, the hope of glory, the one who can solve your problem, the one who can calm the sea, the one who can make a way in the mm -hmm. desert. He is with you. No, he is with you, but he is in the boat sleeping, like the disciples were in the boat and Jesus was sleeping in the storm. And they go and, they go and wake him up. And he calms the storm and then he says, where is your faith? Man. The same God is asking you and me today. He is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. The hope of glory, the mystery that has been hidden for ages, is in you all the time. So how we need to preserve this body? We need to keep this temple holy. We are we are concerned about people, you know, especially if you're the neighbors, a Christian or a friend of yours, when somebody comes at the knocking at the door, uh, if you're shouting at your wife or you're making a big noise on it, what will they think of you? You're not re recognizing the Holy Spirit is with you. He's watching your attitude, how are you handling your family? What are you doing at home? Wherever you go, how you speak to the Ottoman, how you speak to, to the salesman, or whatever it is. All these are signs to show you, are you still living in darkness? We should, we, we say we have the mind of Christ, we should think like Christ, speak like Christ, and whatever we do, we should do it with love. No, unless I'm full with the love of God, I can do all that. Otherwise, I'm still living in darkness. The darkness is there still. We need to come out of that darkness into this marvelous light. This beautiful life that God has given us, we need to live it. It's a gift for us. The greatest of all creation is God making you and me. Now, he has made you now. Now he wants you to enjoy it. And I always admire the ladies because God has chosen all of you as a co-creator, especially during the periods when you are having a uh, menstrual period, you know, people will think, oh, it's dirty. And they, no, you are a co-creator with God. These are times, it's only just passing time. But God has chosen you to be a co-creator. So you are bringing forth, you are bringing another life. You are helping God through the help of the Holy Spirit. Now you are being conceived. And now if you are in the Lord, that child will grow spiritually strong. And that's why we see when Mother Mary goes to the house of Elizabeth, the baby in the mother's womb starts to jump with joy. And that's why whenever I see a, a lady who's pregnant, I ask them, can I pray with, along with you? And I will explain to them the same anointing will come upon you uh, like uh, when Mother Mary goes to the house of Elizabeth. And I've seen so many cases. Oh, I still remember uh, one of my close friends, we were in a wedding and we were walking into that hall. I seen the girl with a big stomach. I knew she's pregnant, but she was very sad and things. So I called her and said, what's happened? Why are you not looking very, thing? you know, there's no movements. Like, you know, she's scared. I took her aside and just held her hand and I started to share with her what took place in the Bible. Mother Mary goes to the house of Elizabeth. And the moment she enters the house, the baby in the womb starts to jump with joy. I told her, just close her eyes and say, I receive your Holy Spirit and my baby is jumping with joy. She kept saying for five times, six times she said she, she felt the baby leaping with joy. That's why we, we always declare Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. The word of God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So when we go and do that, what are we doing? We are demonstrating, we are showing them. 
God is in control. And now you are a co-creator with God. God wants you to know he is the same. The same thing that took place when our lady goes to the house of Elizabeth. The same thing happens when you and me go and share with them. And I'll tell them to know, recognize that the same Holy Spirit is in you now. When you get connected, now that baby, when the baby is born, the baby will be calm with no complications. You will no need of a uh, cesarean. Other people will say you have to go. So that's why when we teach them the word of God, and everything happens according to the word because the word it now you now you require now you know why you treasure the word of God. This word of God is so powerful, and it's at us now. The moment you taste one scripture, now you know the whole Bible is true. So when you want anything, you take the word of God, apply it in your life, believe in it, start speaking it, and you will see the glory of God. When all these things happen. Now you need to just move aside and give the glory to God. It is the word. The word is Jesus himself. Now you're teaching them how to come out of darkness. That is the first calling. In other words, he say the first calling when we are all called, no? it's like the first calling is a honeymoon stage. A newly married couple, they're very happy. Man, happy. After Sam, then the problem starts. There is the second stage. The second stage is the testing stage, or we say the growth stage. And the third stage is the marching call. Where This message I, I learned 25 years back, more than 25 years back. I was in Mumbai for this charismatic, I think silver charismatic thing. Or the roofers were sharing this three calling. This message touched me so much. So wherever I go, at least once or twice, I preach it. Now today God is asking us to see where we are. Are we still in the first calling? Are we still living in darkness? How many years have passed? Are we still living in darkness? Because if we are still behaving like the old way, old self, we are still living in darkness. We need to come out of that darkness. Come out in fight. So the second calling is, God wants us to be holy. Second Timothy chapter 1, 8 and 9. Yes. Chapter 1, brother. 1, 8 and 9. Yes. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Amen. And so it says very clearly, now God saved us, who saved us and called us with the holy calling, not in virtue, of our own works, but in virtue of his own purpose and the grace which he gave us in Christ. So God has called us. So he wants us to holy. So now we need to ask God, Lord, you call me. You want me to be holy. Where I need to change? What I need to do? Am I living the way you want me to live? You should examine yourself every day. And now God gives us the grace. That's what the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he will flee. When out to get grace is, God gives grace to the humble. So if I'm not able to get, get grace, that means I'm proud in that area. I'm not able to ask. So even asking for prayer, asking people to pray for you, it's a sign that you are humbling yourself. I know the word of God. I can pray. Sometimes you're not able to think. You're weak in that area. You ask. It's not wrong by asking because it says, let your request be made to known to God. And we see when you have, uh, even that brother Victor was sharing, it's good to have Abraham, people like uh, Jessica, or somebody who's interceding for you, to pray for you, interceding, to go on. It's very, it's very powerful. When you have the provision, why can't you do it? Only the pride will stop you. 
what will the people think of you? What do they think? We are all children of God. We have all our, we all have the problem. It's no harm in calling and asking them to pray. We are so no, I have this gift. I can encourage others when anyone's having problem, let it be any problem. If I'm there, I'm able to think. When it comes to me, I fail. I call them. I need help. It's not wrong. We're not, it's not a sin to ask anyone to pray. So the Bible says, when if any, any among you are sick, call for the elders. And the elders, they will pray. And the prayer of faith will heal the person. So it's no harm in calling for prayer. So here it says very clearly, God has called us a holy calling. He wants us to be holy. Because that is because we read in, in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4, but even before the foundation of the world, before we were formed, God already wanted us to be holy and blameless. We need to reach that, and we need to do that only through the help of the Holy Spirit. On our own, we cannot do it. Whatever we can do, we do, and the rest we give ask God to help us. And when we do that, now God is helping us. So it says again, if you read 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once oh, you were beautiful. not a people, but now you are God's people. Wow. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. See, these words, when you read it, you believe it. It's so wonderful. And imagine this is God's word. God is Amen. faithful. He's a faithful God. He's faithful to his word. So all we need to do is receive this word and say, Lord, I can't do on my own. You're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has called us out of the darkness into his light. That's our God. Amen. For what? Once you were no people, but now you are his own people. That is what God is calling us today, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Once you were no people, he says, but now you are God's people. And once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. We are receiving mercy. We know yes, mercy. Sir. We don't deserve mercy. We Amen. need punishment because we are all sin, but God put that punishment on his son and now he gives us mercy. That's what the blind beggar called her. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Jesus could not move. He stood and said, call that man here. Yeah, call him here. Yeah. Yes. And he threw off his cloak and he came to Jesus. Today we are the same, Lord. We are crying out for mercy. Yeah. We are not worthy, Lord. But yes. God gives us mercy. Yes. If God is merciful to us, we need to be merciful to our brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters. Be, because people are looking at you and me in the prayer meeting, and I think we are okay. When we go out, we'll face lots of tribulations. People will be harsh at us. That is the time we need to show who we are. We should not respond. We, we should not react. Reacting, if they shout at us, we shout at them. We need to give them a bit of my mind as a no. We need to repay with love. And unless Amen. we are filled with the love of God, we can do it. That's why we are training ourselves every morning here. Because we know this ministry was this Holy Spirit tongue started because of fear. We were all scared of that COVID. And that's how I was listening to one message. Unless we pray at least an hour in tongue, we would be able to save our nation and save ourselves. And that's the day we started and we started this praying in tongues. And today we are so strong now. Now we know God is our strength. And we will not be shaken. Because we are holding on to God's promises 
and we know all of us uh, from different parts of the world but we are god is in your boat is in my boat and he says i will never leave you nor forsake you let the storm come let anything come we are ready to face it and now wherever we are we can join together in one mind and one spirit and that's why we keep insisting on you will be known as my disciples only through your love because god love the love that comes from the father this love nobody can separate us some people misunderstand when you say love we want love we want you to love one another because that is god says you have seen you have not seen me but you can touch your brother and sister but you say you love me you are a liar i need to love even my enemy now because i know that enemy also god has put that enemy in my life so that through the love of god that person will be saved that soul will be saved and heaven is rejoicing when one soul turns to the lord here we are finding it difficult to love our brother and sister or our spouses where comes our love unless you are receiving the love from god unless you know because god what god requires god wants you and me to worship him in spirit and truth he wants you to receive his love he wants you to know who you are we are all his children and he wants us to magnify his name so every minute of our life we are to magnify his name glorify his name so the second calling is a holy calling again 1 peter 1 14 and to 16 one peter one yeah yes like obedient children do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance instead as he who called you is holy be holy yourselves in all your conduct for it is written you shall be holy for i am holy amen so that is what our calling is so heavy so high so we need to live the life and we can't do it on our own so that's why every morning we're asking god lord purify this heart lord cleanse me lord purify me now when we come to stage even in our thought life what i'm thinking am i thinking according to the word of god and do, do i have the mind of christ the wisdom of god formed within me so when i do that i am purifying my mind i know i am able to think like christ speak like christ now i am able to do the things that christ wants me to do god is glorified amen again 1 peter 220 220 21 if you and you when you are beaten for doing wrong what credit is that but if you and you when you do right and suffer for it you have god's approval for to this you have been called because christ also suffered for you leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps amen amen So here we see this scripture I learned years back, which is a very very powerful scripture, one Peter two twenty. See, as a Christian, as a believer, the the qualification to be a child of God is you must be prepared to suffer unjustly. People will persecute you. People will say so many things about you. Are you ready to suffer for, for Christ? You have not done wrong. You are punished, and I have seen it in my workplace. people will come and complain so many things i have been persecuted in my workplace wherever i have been in my own family but i have held on to this verse and till today there is no room that's why i tell my brothers and sisters i can never get offended i will not get offended because the offense is a blessing blocker the moment you get offended people will say so many things about you don't worry people this that they say they must say they say it only then only you are on the right track and if the people don't say anything about you that means you and the devil are on the same track the devil will come against you because of the word your own family will come against you i have seen so many my own family come against me and i held on to the scripture today i am strong it is because of the word of god because you get god's approval 
I can give you examples, so many examples. One example, I, uh, I was working on the railways and a boss, what did he do? Somebody, he, he was taking bribe and I was his PA like. I, I'm not, my designation was a technician, but I was working because of English knowledge, I was his right hand like. So somebody has been writing a letter against him saying he's taking bribe and all that. And on, on the cover, they put a praise the Lord. So I am I am the one who's there in the, in the office who's praying. So my boss, when you see that first thing he thought is me. And he within 24 hours he transferred me, saying that I'm kachada. Kachada means I'm of no use. Transferring me is no problem. But telling, saying, telling that I'm no not good, not worthy, like and transferring is like a it's a degrading way. He punished me and transferred me. And I was working in Melavatan, eight kilometers away from Tutukrin. Tutukrin is my hometown. But now, he's transferring me to Tutukrin. So then I said, okay. At first, I tried to say, tell them, I got the statement to be done. I finished it. No, 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 you leave and go. I said, okay, I left. When I came here to Tutukrin, the, the, the boss in Tutukrin, he's asking me to do the same job that I was doing in Melavatan. So I told him, sorry. Now, I am a technician. I'll do my job. Because if I do the same job, then you somebody will come and say kachada again. So I'll do whatever is my designation, I'll do. So I worked for some time. After some time, the, my, my old boss that was in Melavatan, who said I'm Kachada, he's been transferred and he's coming here. And the people uh, telling me that Sunny Pinadi were. Sunny means devil. The devil is coming at the back of you. Now he's transferred and coming to the place where I am. There. I didn't bother. I Because I am I'm doing what the Bible says. So I went on like that way. And it happened a day. Every morning I go, I sign. The evening when you finish your work, you have to go and sign. So after I was going to sign the register, I seen my boss shivering with fever. This new boss has come, this Kachara man has come, he's shivering with fever. So soon he seen me, he says, Devante, I'm having fever. No problem, I said. I got my bike, took him on the bike, took him to one doctor. This doctor was an alcoholic. I kept him in demand retreat center for six months. He was doing that. So whoever I take him, go free treatment. So I took my boss and went free treatment. He was so happy, he came and told Dumonti's boss. Uh, Dumonti took me to one, uh, one doctor, very nice doctor. No fees at all. See, this, this, is, this is all Proverbs 16, 7 says. When your ways are right to the Lord, even your enemies, he will reconcile. Now, I didn't tell my boss that I didn't write the uh, letter, I didn't do anything. But he came to know. He came slowly, was watching my work. Then he said, no, I, I've, uh, I've done something which is bad. He's a very good man. He was telling me. And now the situation came that he had fever. I had to take him to the doctor. And now he became my best friend. And then what used to happen for two years, I used to travel from Tutukrin to Madurai for, to conduct a prayer at 6 o'clock in the evening. Whereas I cannot go 6 o'clock because 5 o'clock is my duty. So I got permission from him. 3 o'clock, I finished my work. 3 o'clock, I'll travel by bus and go. So once while I was traveling the bus, he, he calls me on the phone. It was about 4 o'clock. I got afraid. I thought, some vigilance has come or something. Uh, then I asked him, he is asking, Dumanti, where are you? I said, I'm at the bus, sir. I'm going to Madurai for the prayer. No, no, no. I want to know the cricket score. See, he became so close, he's calling me to find out the cricket score, not about duty. This is what the scripture says. When your ways are right to the Lord, even your enemies, he will reconcile. 1 Peter 2.20 says, you should not get offended because offense is from the devil. So, I, when you suffer unjustly, you get God's approval. God gives you promotion. So, these things, unless through the help of the Holy Spirit, you are able to fulfill that. And now what happens? Again, it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No testing has overtaken you. That is not common to everyone. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Yeah. Amen. So, all these scriptures I have tasted right from the beginning. I have come to the Lord and I have seen it. Because we say, Lord, I can't bear it. I can't bear it. When you hold on to the scriptures, now you come to see God gives you the grace at that time. 
and then you come out of it. When you come out of it, sometimes you forget. That's why you need to remind yourself. When we share this, what are we, we are reminding ourselves how God, when we are in that situation, God brought us out. Now you can encourage your brother and sister with the same scripture. Because they'll say, no, no, no. I, I, they, when they have a problem, they think the whole world does not have a problem. Only I have a big problem. That's what my look was. When my wife was having a problem, I used to look, I used to look at others. They are okay only for me, wife or my wife only, this problem and that problem. So here it says, God will not test you beyond this strength. He will give you the grace and strength to bear it up and show you a way to come out of it. So when you come out of it now, you teach your brother, you tell them the same thing. You just hold on to the scripture, put your hand on that, pray, and you see how God will bring you out of it. Then when he comes out of it, don't forget to magnify his name, glorify his name. Tell others. When you tell others, you're glorifying his name. You're telling the, the world that God is faithful to his word. So we come to see this is the second. So a lot of things, all these are testing where your faith is becoming strong. Now, this, as you're becoming strong, you're becoming holy. Because that's, that's the second calling. First calling is coming out of darkness. The second calling is holy calling. During this holy calling, there will be lots of tests. As you pass the test, you're getting a promotion in your spiritual life. Then the third call is the call which is called, all of us are called the marching call, the goat. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, 15 to 20. Yes, please. Yeah. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these so, signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. Beautiful. So, when I read these scriptures, it's so beautiful, so powerful. People are still struggling to believe that. No, the first thing it says, go into the whole world. No, it's not an option. It's a command. As a believer, as a child of God, you need to do what God has commanded. So, in the Hebrew thing, the version there says, Go means like I'm standing and somebody is pushing you. Because many of us don't want, we want to be in a comfort zone. No, when I first came into the Lord, well, people would say, No, go to, when I still remember Father Augustine saying, Don't wait for somebody to start a prayer group. You start a prayer meeting. Start it with your own family. Come together, say the rosary. I use some scriptures and start. If you're waiting for somebody else to start, that will not start. So you need the fire that, because the moment you are in the retreat, you are in fire, you are, uh, you are excited, you want to do so many things. Now, if you go back and just stop for some time, like pause, all that anointing will come down and then you go back to your old ways. So I was full of God's love. The third day on the Wednesday, I still remember, I got up, I was kneeling down on the bunker, I was praying in tongues, I was feeling so happy, the joy, you can't explain the joy. Now, if a person who's drinking different kinds of alcohol, they'll tell, no, what, what this has that and that, they'll explain. But this kind of joy, you can't explain. You're bubbling with joy, you want to tell the whole world. And that's why you see, when somebody comes from a retreat, you want to meet them and ask them, what is your experience? They will say, oh, the anointing was so good, the preaching was good. And what was your, each one has a different experience and you're ready to appreciate that and to hear what they, you're longing, waiting, when to hear that. That is your experience when you go. Then after that, you have to continue. And that's why from the time I came back, 1994, I went, they came back, 1994, 1993, I heard of Divine. It took me one year to go back be there because they told me, you cannot smoke, you cannot drink. But the day I thought of going to Divine, and then the very next day I stopped smoking. And by 1994, I went there. 1994, from that day, continuously, I started to take people to Divine 
I used to take a lot of girls. I took a bus full of children to Divine. That was my thing. I, I, mean, I, I was working on the railway, so I'll do the booking. I'll take people and go leave them and bring them. So I, a lot of, of my own leave I have used for the gospel. Because in the railways, you know, we can uh, accumulate 300 days. 300 days leave means full salary. And about uh, sick leave, I, can, uh, I had a lot of sick leave because I was not falling sick. I was healthy. So I cannot go and tell lies to, uh, to take sick leave. Only towards the end of retirement, I told, I, was, uh, I told the doctor, I got such a lot of leave. I don't have this leave. So I got medical leave. So he too, then he'll say, okay, I'll give you 10 days, 15 days. So I lost a lot of medical leave there because I was not sick at all. God kept me in good condition. Why I'm saying this? When we come to the Lord, first thing we'll say, uh, not now, I'll go a little later. And you know, when you're newly married, and then uh, after some time, the children are starting to grow. Then you say you have to take the children to school and college. And then by the time you come when you're old now, you're not able to go. How will you go and preach the gospel? Our calling is to go into the whole world and proclaim the good news. Now the Bible says, wherever you are, if you're not able to go, at least in your house, you can pray for the people who are preaching the gospel. Because I heard a priest saying, now, if you want uh, the number one God loves you is to pray for the preachers, the, the priests and nuns, and for all those who are going out doing in the mission field. So when you pray, you're supporting them, praying. Because we can, sometimes financially we're not able to support, but spiritually we can pray for them. Because God, number one is his word to be proclaimed. Go into the whole world and proclaim the good news. Good news, God loves you. Now we don't need to go and go for a training to tell God loves you. You have tasted his love, go and tell others. So, especially when you're bubbling with love, when you come back from a retreat center, whoever you see, you tell them. When I used to tell people, people, some, some people see me, they'll walk off the other road. Oh my gosh, you start off with Jesus, Jesus. So many friends of my Christian boys, they used to move, they're all dead and gone now. They have left this planet are not using the gifts and talents. That's what I keep telling people. The richest place is the graveyard. They have taken all their talents to the graveyard. They have not shared what they have, God has given them. They have gone, left this planet. They have not done anything on this planet Earth. Useful. Because something that has eternal value, we need to do. At least 10 people. I was sharing some time back now. I heard a sermon outside a church, a non-Christian church. A gospel was preaching. I was so the, the, the thing for the word of God. And there it says, a young boy was 10 years old. He was going to die the next day with blood cancer. And he died. And next day was his birthday. So that the nurse was asking what. The nurse was crying. The doctor said, why are you crying? We all know he's a blood cancer patient. He's going to die. No, no. He, she said, no, 10 people. He told about Jesus. We are looking for the 11th one. By the birthday, he died. Then the doctor said, you're the 11th and I'm the 12th. So no, at that time, my age was 40. So I said, at least 40 people I need to tell about Jesus. I took 40 girls from Dubai from the Holy Cross Convent to Chalakudi. 40. Then I took 60. That, that my, my aim was to take people to the Lord, send them. Then slowly I, I attended a counseling session there in that uh, Divine Retreat Center. I became a counselor. I said, and from that, I started to preach. Well, wherever I used to go and share the gospel because now it says go into the whole world and proclaim the good news and when you go then only you will grow and that's how when I went I used to go Monday, Tuesday all through the week some house to pray and that's how when, one house when I was praying I had came to know I had the gift of deliverance so that's why he said the first thing it says go into the whole world and proclaim the good news then it says heal the thing before that it says in my name, you will cast out demons. The first time when I mentioned the name of Jesus and I was able to do that, the Bible, you remind yourself of the Bible, it says, no, and all the disciples came and they were so happy and they told Jesus, we seen Satan. And Jesus said, I seen Satan falling from heaven. And then he said, don't rejoice that the demons obey you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So when your name is written in heaven, when you go into God's will, because God has commanded you. You might be going for a wedding in Bombay or uh, uh, some function there. Don't keep your mouth quiet. Share the gospel. Because now we all, all do. We, whatever we have learned, we tell people. And now what are we doing? 
we are doing exactly what the Bible says. Now, if you examine yourself, which calling are you? Are you still in the darkness? Are you still preparing yourself? We might be preaching the word of God, but we might still purifying ourselves. This is a process because we will become perfect only when we when Jesus comes. So every day we are purifying ourselves, washing ourselves, cleansing ourselves. Now we are, we are purifying ourselves. We don't want to even think of something which is not of the kingdom of God. Because ma, we are keeping our mind stayed on God and his word. Isaiah 26, 3. When you keep your mind stayed on God's word, you have perfect peace. If you turn it and think of the worldly things, you'll get worried about so many things. But that is not for us. God says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added on you. So today, my brothers and sisters, it's, it's a, a time to examine ourselves. Are we still in the first calling? Are we still living in darkness? Are we still come out of that? We come to the second stage, that is the holy calling, the growth, testing stage. Or we are in the third stage now, the marching stage, where we go and tell others about Jesus. Because God wants all of us to go to the whole world and proclaim the good news. You know, you can't go and proclaim the good news without tasting his love. And that is what God is asking us today. Every day he's speaking to you and me. He is telling you and me that he is faithful. I have already loved you with an everlasting love. We can go on and on, my dear brothers and sisters, talking about God's love. Our main calling is God has called us to know him, to love him and serve him. Whether I like it or not, I have to do what God has called me to do. If I don't do it, God is going to ask me, what have you done for me? Now, whatever we do, we are doing it with joy. It's a joy. It's a challenge. But we know we can do all things because Christ is strengthening us. So we should always have a focus on our meter. That is, are we falling into pride? Are we humble? If we are humble, then we are getting grace from God. Now we are able to resist the devil. And the Bible says the devil will flee from you because he sees a person who is humble. God gives, God gives us grace. Our main calling is to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. John 3.30 says, and he will exalt us at the right time. Exalt us over sin. Today, if we are not humbling ourselves, we are finding it difficult to overcome sin. Because the devil puts pride in you. Pride is the worst enemy. Many people take it lightly. But God looks at us here because the Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So let us ask the Lord every day, Lord, help me to be humble. Help me to stand firm on your word, Lord. Help me to do the will of the Father. The will of the Father is that we should be blameless and holy. And every day, that's our love walk with the God. And we do that, God will exalt us. And there he says, wherever my word is proclaimed, and right now, I have proclaimed Mark 16, 20. I will come and confirm the message with signs and wonders. Right now, as you are listening to God's word, already healing has taken place. So many people, as you are listening to God's word, because God's word, because I believe my words are life and spirit, God is telling us. When you are listening to God's word, his life and his spirit is going into you. That same life is going into me. The same word of God, which is a double sword, is going into me. No healing is taking place for me, for my wife and my family, and for all those who are listening to God's word. Because God's word is a standard. It never changes. He's the same. So when you're listening, that's why if you're not listening to God's word, the devil will deceive you. While you're listening, healing will take place. Because this word will not return to void. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when you go and proclaim God's word, same signs and wonders will happen. God says, I will confirm it with signs and wonders. <laughs> Lord, I praise you and thank you, Father, for all those who are listening to your word, Lord. You are there to confirm it, Lord. Because you are a God who says, wherever my word is proclaimed, I will come and confirm the message with signs and wonders. You sent forth your word and healed us, Lord. And we thank you, Father. You have opened our spiritual life. Help us to recognize our calling. We are all called to do the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is that not a single soul should perish. Lord, we are all in the, the battlefield. And we are all doing what you have commanded us to do, Lord. Every day we are coming to you, Lord. Being filled with the love of God, Lord. You are exercising our faith, Lord. Becoming stronger and stronger. You said build yourself up on the most holy faith. 
praying in the spirit because we know what God requires. You require faith. And it is impossible to please God without faith. And now we believe, Lord. We are in a, in a family where we thank you and praise you, Father, before time. Because we know even before we begin to pray, you are about to answer the our prayers. We thank you and praise you, Father, for all the wonderful things you have done for us and our families, Lord. As we surrender and submit to you, will, Lord, giving glory and honor to you, Lord, for all what you are going to do for us, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Angie. Thank you.